Big Fat Man Scoop, Brooklyn Clan. What's up, y'all? This is Fat Man Scoop. And right now, you're watching the Sensei, the number one, the king, my dude, Big Brando. He taught me, personally, me, Fat Man Scoop. All you gotta do is keep your mouth closed and your ears open. Listen to the man talk. That's knowledge personified right there. And I wouldn't trust nobody else but my dude, Big Brando. And I said it. Batman school, Big Brando. Let's go. What's happening, everybody? Boy, Big Brando, and today let's talk about payment options when you're out vending. So, since I started doing a bunch of these vending videos, this is a big question that a lot of people have been asking, and it's what type of payment options do I accept when I'm out vending live out in public? Obviously, cash is king. I always take cash. With taking cash, you got to make sure you have change ready to go. So, if you're selling stuff for twenty dollars, if somebody comes to you with a hundred, you got to make sure you can break that hundred and give that person some change. If you're selling stuff for fifteen dollars, then you got to make sure you got fives on hand because you got to be able to give change and break whatever somebody gives you. But outside of that, we live in a digital world where PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, Zelle, and all these things are readily available. I personally don't really accept this kind of payment when I'm out in public unless it's from somebody that I personally know. But I know there's a lot of people out there that accept this type of payment when they're out vending. Some of the cool tricks that I've seen people do is they print out the QR code for Venmo, for PayPal, for Zelle, or whatever they're using. They laminate it and they have it in their booth or on their table. So when somebody wants to pay, all they do is scan the QR code, payment goes through, bingo. Now there's no real reason why I don't take that type of payment. It's not that I'm scared to take that type of payment. It's not that it's unsafe. I just know when there's that many options on the table for somebody, sometimes it confuses the customer. It's good to have the options, but a lot of times if you have older clientele that don't know what all that stuff is or how to use the QR code, then you're sitting there teaching them how to process a payment when you could just be doing cash or credit card, you know what I mean? These are just things that I'm wary of when I'm out vending. So the next thing is credit cards. I personally take credit card transactions when I'm out. A lot of times, 40 to 50% of my transactions are done through credit card. So the next question is, what card reader do you use? Do you have a register? Do you have a phone app? What do you do and how do you get paid? All of you guys know this already, but I use Shopify. Shopify is my online store platform. The beauty behind Shopify is everything is built in internally. My inventory is in my dashboard. I process payments through Shopify when people order online from me. My payouts are through Shopify. So it doesn't make any sense for myself to go out and get a different card reader from a different site, from a different app, I just use Shopify for everything. So Shopify makes it easy to buy hardware through them. Credit card readers, chip readers, swipe readers, tap readers, iPad registers, iPad holders, full registers. There's so many different things that you can buy to benefit your own business. All I bought was the small little card reader. It's like this big. I don't even have it on me right now, but it's like this big. Connects via Bluetooth to your phone or to your iPad. People could tap. They can insert the chip and they can swipe. Very, very seamless as long as it's connected. Now I say that because sometimes when you're in your booth, you're running a Bluetooth speaker, you have your Bluetooth card reader. Sometimes you can lose connection with all these different Bluetooth things connected. And that's happened to me before. I prefer it to be hardwired, but hey, so be it. In the event that you lose connection, all you do is shut down your iPad or your phone, shut down the Bluetooth card reader, start them back up, reconnect them. In the event that this happens, this gives you a chance to talk to the customer while everything is rebooting back up. Don't panic, don't freak out. All you gotta do is shut everything down, turn it back on, easy call. Which also brings me to having an iPad that has a data plan attached to it or a cell phone with a data plan attached to it. This kind of stuff can be operated offline also. You can process all these credit card payments and then when you get to Wi-Fi, they'll all load up into your Shopify. I've done that in the past before. But I found it way easier to have a small data plan on my iPad and use the iPad strictly for vending at events. Now, if you don't do a lot of events, just use your cell phone. No harm, no foul. And if you wanted to stream music and use the Bluetooth card reader with your phone, what I noticed was if you just bought like an iPod Touch, which is basically like a small little phone, 
stream music off of that to the Bluetooth speaker, and then keep your phone dedicated for the Bluetooth card reader. Keeping those things separate helps out also because then there's no connection issues and stuff like that. But the reason I have the data plan on my iPad is because I vend a lot and it's easier for me to process the payments. I like to make sure that everything goes through smoothly while the customer is still in the booth credit card transaction goes through, I could text them their receipt or email them their receipt. Everybody's happy by the time they leave the booth. So when it comes to credit card transactions, I use Shopify as my online store. So I also use the Shopify POS app. I think it's called, it stands for point of sale or something like that. Easy part is, is it goes directly to your Shopify account. Your inventory is already in there on your phone or your iPad. It looks like a little register and all you're doing is pushing whatever they're buying. They bought this shirt, they bought this hat, they bought this shirt in this size. Everything is on there. You custom make the receipt for the customer. Credit card transaction goes through. You email or text them the receipt. Bingo. They have everything on there. Transaction goes through. Everybody's happy. The payment goes through and then you get paid out on your normal Shopify billing cycle. Whenever Shopify pays you out, that's when all those credit card transactions will pay you out also. If you have Shopify, you know exactly what I'm talking about. All that stuff hits the account. You're good to go. Hopefully this clears a lot of stuff up for people. If you wanted to operate off of Zelle, Venmo, Cash App, PayPal, and all that good stuff, highly recommend printing out the QR codes, keeping it in your booth so people could just scan it, process the payment, bingo. If you didn't want to operate that way, Shopify card reader. If you have a Shopify online store, this is the main reason why I use Shopify is because everything is on the dashboard already for you. If I'm doing online sales, my shipping is already in the dashboard. I don't have to leave the Shopify site. If I'm out vending out in public, my Shopify POS app has all of my inventory on there and all I'm doing is pushing what people are buying, processing the credit card transactions, straight through Shopify without leaving the Shopify site. Everything is streamlined and I don't even get paid by Shopify. Shopify don't even wanna work with me, but I'm letting you guys know what I use. And also cash is king, right? So if you're dealing with cash, make sure you have the appropriate change for people. So if that means selling t-shirts for $15, you gotta make sure you have at least 200, $300 in fives to give out as change. Somebody comes with a 20, you need to be able to give them a five for change if you're selling your shirts for 15 bucks. Or make your life easier, sell everything for $20, then you only gotta carry $20 change, you know what I mean? Might have to do a couple fives and tens here and there because somebody might pay with a 50, but that's a rare occasion. Usually people got hundreds and twenties in their wallet. Hopefully this information right here helps somebody out, cleared some things up for some people. If you got any questions, leave it in the comments. Follow me on Instagram, BigBrandoTV. Catch you guys on the next one, man, yeah.